Working with data often involves the need to find a pattern in data. So let's look at a case here where we have, imagine this data basically e exported from some system. So we get this data uh, and all the names are basically in one column with other information describing, describing that name. So in the end we want to take that data and p turn it into something like this where each row is a person, a different person. Now we have to find a pattern to know when when each uh, set of data starts and stops. So when we look at this one, this one's not too bad. We can see quite clearly that the names are always in upper case. So we know that's where each set starts. So this is the first set, and this is the second, and then this is the third. Now, uh, you see there's some spaces in here. Now with a macro, you could possibly clean it up. But let's say that you you don't have a programmer or you're not allowed to use macros, whatever the reason, you have to basically exclude or ignore these and then get the last value. This one's optional as well. See over here in our, our solution that we have the yes here and for the other two names it's just a blank because they don't have that value. It's either a yes if the person is on a contract, it's a blank if they are not. So we have to account for all of these things in our solution. So let's take a look now. Alright, so let's go to step one. And I'll, I'll just take these and put them back over again so we can see where these names are. Um, step one is what is the pattern? So here's my formula. First, um, it's an if statement to say if the cell is blank, then just give me false. That would be the case in this row and all of these. Uh, it's just a blank, so get, let the formula stop at the beginning. It's uh, a little bit lighter on the calculation. So if it's, if it's a blank, false, else, we want to know is this uh, is this the the name or not? That's all what step one is all about. So let's, in the and statement, everything has to be true to get it true. So we have two parts to this, logical one and logical two. Logical one is just making sure that it is text, that it's not the higher date, which is essentially in not a number. Uh, the second part, though, we have to make sure that we're not saying that accounting, or like the department, accounting, finance, IT services, we don't want to confuse that because that's also a text. So now we're using this exact function to say is this value C12, or let's actually go down to this uh, Raj thing here. So we're back in our exact function. Let's take the first one. I'm going to press F9. It's just the way it is in the cell currently, which is all uppercase. Is that text exactly the same as if we change uh, it to uppercase? So we know it is. That is true. So now our and statement is giving us a true for this part and a true for that part. And so, of course, the whole thing gives us an answer of true, and that's what we get in the cell. We only get a true when it is uh, the person's name, all the way down. This could be thousands of rows. If it's here for finance, this is going to fail, we'll get the false, because our and statement Sure, this is true. It is text. I press F9, I see true. But for the logical, when I press F9, it's giving me a false. So when I go in here and I say, okay, I'm going to select this, press the F9 key, select the second part, press the F9 key, they are not exactly the same, so our exact function gives us a false, which is what we want. So that's step one, just giving us a true when it's a new name, a false, uh, if not. So, step two is the group number. We want to get a group number, as you can see here, this is group one, repeating, and then group two, repeating, and then group three, and all the way down to possibly hundreds or maybe even a few thousand of these. Uh, and that simply is, let's look at this one. Pretty simple formula that says, uh, if D9 equals true, then, yeah, if D19 equals true, then we want to say, okay, give me a one plus the value above which means that it's an, it's at the next group, so it's a 2. But let's say we were down here, and now I'm saying if D21, which is this cell, equals true, 1 plus the value above, but in this case that's not true. Uh, so we're simply repeating the value above, repeating the 2 above, repeating the 2 above, all the way down until once again we have a new number, a new group. Um, and it's worth mentioning, if someone tries to tell you to use a moving count if, where uh, the, the second part of the 
range is, is growing as you move it down, that is very dangerous because it's okay in a small data set like this. You wouldn't even notice the difference. But in a very large data set with 100,000 or 200,000 rows, that would cause your computer to probably freeze and crash. And this is a very simple formula. All right. So step number three, what is the group item number? So we want to be able to look at, uh, there is a pattern, right? So the, the department is always a three. Department here is a three. Department here is a three. The name is always a one, as you see here, right? It's always a one. So we want to sort of get a simple formula once again, nothing complicated, to get that item number. Because later on, we'll be using that uh, when we pull in the values to get it in this format. So here we have something like this that says, if E15 not equal to E14, then give me a one. Else, give me, which means it's a new group, right? Here we're getting, here we're getting a one. It's a new group because they are not the same, so just give me a 1 and stop. Else, give me the value above plus 1. That's the counter. So here, this part is not true, so we're going to the false part of the if statement, the value uh, above plus 1. So now we have our, within, the, within each group, we have an item counter. And then finally, uh, step 4 is just the lookup key. That lookup key, it simply puts the two together just to make it a little bit easier in this part that I'm going to show you now. So let's look at our final formula. Um, I've put if error around the whole thing, but for now, let's just ignore that just to make this a little bit easier to, to interpret. Okay, so I'm going to press enter. I'm going to drag this over and drag it all the way down. And we get a bunch of errors. Later on, we'll clean that up. So offset. Uh, offset starts here on C10, which is the top the, the column header data. How many rows down? We're simply putting this together. The one, let's just go inside of the match really quickly. I highlight this part. I press the F9 key. One underscore one. Find it in here. It's the first item. So our match, if I go like this, it's going to give us, if I press the F9 key, a one. So start at C10, go down one. Well, let's look at the third name now, Julio Ramirez. He's a ways down the list, but Starting in C10, the match is this time, I'm going to press F9, gives us a 14. So we'll start from here, go down 14. That will get us to Julio. And of course, we're not going any columns to the right or to the left. We're already in the correct column, which is column C. So we look at another example. Um, let's say IT services. Um, we go in here. We're starting at C10 again. And we go down 16. So really, it's all about this key in here. We are saying, look for the three underscore three, which gets us to Julio's uh, department name, which is IT services. Now, you see how this changed, actually. Let's just put on that if error at the very end here. Many different ways that you could avoid using if error, but I'm just a bit lazy. You could ask another counter again, uh, but I'm just going to wrap the whole thing because it's not that heavy. Press Enter. I drag this over, um, I drag it down, and now I'm just going to go in here, get the date format, and click this. Okay, so now you're ready to hand this over to someone. All they have to do is know that this area here is where they go in and paste the data. If they want, they, you can show them how to, maybe you could make a name range out of this, give it a name up here in the name box, then they just highlight it, maybe they right click clear the data if uh, then they can paste in the new data and this will basically change the data and put it in the correct format now there's one little thing here what if they are concerned that the formulas aren't dragged down far enough they have 10,000 rows one time the next time it is 80,000 um, have the formulas been dragged down far enough but if they're dragged down too far it's just sort of wasting calculation so this is the formula that you can you could use many different things, but uh, this says basically um, in here how many names do we have compared to how many names over here? And because these are formulas in these cells, we can't simply just count the number of non-blanks because these are all non-blank. There's formulas in here, so this little array is getting the max number in our step two, which is the number of people, number of names. Uh, is it equal to the number of things here that have a length greater than zero? So if we were to, let's say, delete 
one of these guys, it would say false. We could also custom this message uh, in here, change it. But uh, you could say, please drag formulas down further or whatever. But uh, in this case, formulas drag down far enough. We have three names and we have three over here.